Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved a love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I beg you, between me and the vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns will grow up in it. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The The vineyard vineyard of the Lord Lord of hosts is the house house of Israel. Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It stretched out and its branches to the sea. To the river it stretched out its roots. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by the way. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted, the Son of Man you have claimed for yourself. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine forth, and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts 
is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world that you should go and bear fruit and your, that your fruit should abide says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and dug a winepress in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season of fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit and the tenants took his servants and beat one killed another, and stoned another. And he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Afterwards, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation producing the fruits of it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings employ the image of a vineyard surrounded by a hedge to describe how our relationship with God can sometimes be. In the first reading, Isaiah likens Israel to God's vineyard. God has planted this vine, cared for it, nourished it, and protected it. He has planted a hedge around it. He expects this vineyard to bear good fruit the fruit of justice and righteousness. Unfortunately, the vineyard produces bad fruit, the sour grapes of bloodshed and tears. God's chosen people have not lived up to God's expectation, and now God wants to destroy this vineyard. This was the experience of the Jewish people, that when they turned away from God, it was like the destruction of who they were. 
What about us today? Do we live up to God's dream for us? Do we bear the fruits that God expects of us? Sometimes we do very well. So many of our Christian communities are places of support, comfort, and love. I often feel so at home at church, and I'm deeply grateful for that. The church provides for the material needs of the poor and runs hospitals and schools. There are commendable, good, and sweet fruits coming out of our vineyard. But there are also many sour grapes in the church today. Many people experience judgment and exclusion at church. Unfortunately, homilies are often irrelevant and boring, poorly delivered, or offer disappointingly bad theological interpretations of scripture. Catholic Twitter, or X, is one of the most hostile spaces online at the moment. Some of the vilest comments I have seen on Twitter have been from Catholics on both sides of the conservative progressive spectrum, dishing out hatred towards people supposedly on the other side. Is this what God expects of us? Is this who God wants us to be? We experience a new destruction of the vineyard every time we fail to love and honor one another. The psalm gives us hope. It is a response to the first reading. The people of Israel call out to God, Why have you allowed us to be destroyed? Why have you brought brought down the protecting hedge that you built around us. If you love us so much, how can you allow us to go down this path? But the lament psalms always end in hope, and we see a beautiful turn at the end of the psalm. Bring us back. Let your face shine forth, and we shall be saved. I think we too should make this prayer to God. Bring us back. Let us be your beloved, protected vineyard once again. The gospel passage takes up the same image of a vineyard surrounded by a hedge. This time, the vineyard does not produce bad fruits, but the tenants do not want to give to the owner of the vineyard that which is due to him. They kill his messengers and eventually even his son. This time, the vineyard does not represent the nation of Israel, but rather the kingdom of God. The tenants are the custodians of the kingdom. The messengers are the prophets of God. And the son refers to Jesus, who is killed outside the walls of Jerusalem. What sort of custodians of the kingdom are we? Do we give to God what is due to God? Do we listen to the words of the prophets? Do we receive the Son of God in our lives? Or do we cast him out and kill him, rejecting God so that we can hold on to our securities and comforts? I recently visited a parish youth group, and I found that many of the young people were very poorly informed about Christian teachings and were demonstrably uncomfortable at church. Why is that? Why do, you, why do young people feel so disinterested and so uncomfortable at church? Why don't they feel at home in the church? I think this may be a sign that we have failed as custodians of the kingdom. We were supposed to care for the vineyard and allow God's will to flourish in it. But perhaps because of our insecurities, our fears and our attachments, We have tried to turn the vineyard into our own place of comfort and wealth. We have turned the gifts inwards. We use old signs and symbols. We exclude those who make us uncomfortable. We do not reach out to the poor, the marginalized, the confused. We fail to listen to the constant cries of the prophets, which call us to simplicity openness, love, and joy. We fail to listen to the message of the Son, who has come to bring us light, joy, and freedom. 
Is this perhaps why young people do not feel at home in the church? Is this why people are leaving the church at a faster rate than they are joining it? The Synod on Synodality has been in progress since October 2021. All around the world, Catholics were asked to engage in spiritual conversation about the state of our journeying together as church. A large meeting of the Synod will happen in Rome this month to discuss the fruits of these sharings. Sadly, many parishes and parish priests refused to participate in this synodal process. They said, the church does not need to listen. The church has the answers already. We should just be finding ways to preach the message we already have instead of wasting our time listening to people. The same parishes and parish priests often express confusion as to how to respond to the emptying of churches that we see around the world. Yet how will we understand why people feel uncomfortable in church if we do not stop to listen to them? How will we gain insight into how God is at work in the world if we do not stop to listen to people's experiences of God in their lives? Listening can only help us in these endeavors. Listening helps us to be better custodians of the kingdom. Jesus says that the sweet fruits of the kingdom may come from unexpected places. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Might it be that we are missing out on some fresh joy of the kingdom because we have unwittingly rejected it? Where else might we be called to search for God's surprising joys? The readings today invite us to examine ourselves as Christian communities. Are we bearing sweet fruit? Are we faithful custodians of God's kingdom? Paul offers us some insights into things to look out for in the vineyard. Do we find in ourselves whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, gracious, excellent, and worthy of praise? Let us pray today for the grace to bear the good fruits of the kingdom. May our communities be transformed into the communities that God dreams of for us. May we become a fruitful vineyard, and may we become faithful and honest custodians of the kingdom. Amen. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.